Hey guys, I am going to try this again. My app keeps crashing on me, so I restarted everything and let's hope this works. Um, I first want to explain that I don't use my camera app to take any of my pictures. I use the Visco, the VSCO app, uh, simply because I feel like I have more control when I'm taking my pictures. So I'm going to click that and show you how I use it. A lot of people have told me that they have it or have heard of it, but they just simply don't know how to use it. So I am going to show you how. It's going to open up to your gallery of pictures. As you can see, I take a lot. And um, I have taken a lot of this stinking pear. So let's just get right back into it. Oh, if you do take pictures with your camera, uh, you can import them by clicking that plus sign and it'll take you to your camera roll and you can choose which pictures you want to import. Um, I don't ever do that, but personal preference. Okay, I'm going to swipe down. As you can see, I have a grid. I pay attention to how I compose my picture and where I place my subjects. I like to off-center my subject. I think it adds interest. Um, if you want to center your subject, go for it. Um, Personally, I just, I like the look of an off-centered subject. You can click this bottom left square, and that's going to take you to a lever, and you can see how that works, or it's going to just give you a clean screen. I like the grid, like I said. If you tap two fingers at the same time, you're going to get a focus ring and an exposure ring. Drag your focus ring over to your subject and get it set up, and then drag your exposure and as you can see, as I drag it around, it changes. That's why I like this app so much. So I'm going to put both of those on my focus, uh, on my focus, on my subject, and we'll take the picture. And I'm going to click the X, and then it's going to take me to all of these pictures that I've taken, and I'm going to double click on the one that I want. At the bottom of the screen, you see two lines with sliders on it. Click that. It's going to take you to all of the presets, and you can just click these to see what they do. They all do something different. Uh, if you go all the way down, you'll see shop. You can go to their shop and purchase different presets for, um, some of them are free, some of them are 99 cents, some of the sets are like $4. I personally love A6, so that's where we're going to start. Click that triangle underneath there and click the sliders again. This is where we customize it. I don't ever leave uh, a preset alone. I leave it or I go in and I customize it because it's going to look different for every single picture. So you have to, but once you find, this is what I like to call a recipe. <laughs> when, I, when you find your recipe for your pictures, it's going to be easy and it's you're going to edit these pictures um, in no time. It takes me seconds to edit each picture that I post. So the first little uh, circle that looks like a sun is your exposure. Just play around with that. Personally for this picture I like the underexposed look. That way my background is um, my background is darker and then my subject is a little bit brighter so I'm gonna click the check mark. Then you have contrast. I always add a little bit of contrast. If you add too much, it just look, starts to look a little crazy. So I, I just keep everything a little subtle. So if you hold down on your picture, you're going to see the before and the after. I click the check mark, and then these next few things I don't ever use. Um, it's just crop and kind of changes the perspective of your image. Uh, play with them and see if you like them, but I don't ever touch them. I then go to clarity, which is the triangle with the line down the middle. And again, take that all the way up and just see what it does. And then you can slowly come down and see, stop wherever it, you like it. I always keep clarity at one or below, personally. Then you have the next triangle, which is sharpen. I usually take that up to between one and three somewhere. It just depends on the picture. I think that looks good. And then saturation is the circle. You can take it up, take it down. Uh, just be cautious of how much you add because with skin tones, saturation can make your skin look 
green or not green it can make it look orange super fast so add with caution click the check mark and then you have the highlight saved um, use this if you want to I'm just going to show you what it does if you can see the difference in my table it's just going to save those highlights that are that might be too bright I personally like my highlights right now so I'm going to leave it alone same with the shadows watch the background see how that brings it up again I want a dark background so I'm not going to mess with this temperature you can play with this if you want it to be cooler in tone you can take it down I personally like to add a little bit of temperature to my pictures just a just a hair not much at all so there's the before there's the after the raindrop is tint I don't ever mess with that skin tones I don't mess with a beignet beignet vignette I don't know um, I add every now and then as you can see it's just darkening the edges to kind of draw your eye into your subject I will keep it right there I think that looks good so then you have grain if you zoom in you can see that my picture is pretty clear and and crisp if I add that grain see what that does there and you can embrace that I think there are certain situations where you have to embrace that if you don't have a major light source and that's okay but personally I like mine to be pretty clean and crisp then you have fade I love fade it see how it adds like a yummy haze I don't ever take it all the way up but I take it down to I don't know anywhere between two and four is really kind of my range of what I like so I'm gonna click that those last two raindrops I don't ever touch um, they add color to your highlights or your shadows so I'll just kind of show you an example but I I don't I just don't play with those so that is it here's our before here's the after I'm gonna click that triangle again and I'm gonna click the check mark so that takes you it's gonna take it a while to load those changes but you'll see it pop up here in just a second there we go and so from here you can save it you can I always click the three little dots in the bottom right corner and I say save to camera roll and then I say actual size <clears throat> so again I just want to reiterate um, that pay attention to how you compose your pictures how you place your subject um, last night uh, Sean came home with gifts for the kiddos he came home from a trip and they immediately had to go outside and color with their new chalk so I had to take a picture of that and I thought it was perfect how they lined up this is not the best quality picture as you can see but I don't care from far away it looks okay uh, same thing here so when I took this picture see how my kiddos are like my focus is on the bottom part of the picture if that makes sense and then same thing here uh, my son is kind of on the left side of the picture and then he's framed by the playhouse so pay attention to that try to find ways to frame your subject's face uh, let's see here here's one with Ellie she's in her crib and she's off center to the right and then let me take you to this one there's a picture I have of Sean and Elliot and their heads are together and sometimes when you're taking pictures of people you want to try to put them with their heads together or like if you're taking a group of pictures with your kids try to place them to where they make a triangle if that makes sense so their heads are together and then their bodies are kind of making that triangle and it just adds good interest and it's a good focal uh, focal point I guess um, let's see here always try to find good natural light it's going to make the world a difference I always take pictures here at our table because it's we have this big window and it, it's just perfect and it brightens up their faces um, let me show you the before and after on this one I did the same thing that I just showed you uh, here's the before so I mean it's a good picture but there's there's 
no pop. There's uh, skin tones are pretty bland. So then when you add that preset to it, you're going to get that pop and that, um, that color. So if you guys have any questions, please tell me. I, I have recorded this video so many times that I can't remember what I've left out. So uh, please ask questions. I will tell you, I don't like to hoard information if I have something to share that can help people take better pictures of their families. I'm going to share it. So I hope you like this. If you want me to go into detail on anything like composure, uh, not composure, composition, <laughs> and uh, lighting, ask me. I'm not a pro, but I can answer you. Uh, I can tell you how it works for me. So anyways, you guys have a great day. I hope you like this and um, we'll see you soon.